Mafia 2 is criminally underrated. It's a lavish gangster spectacle with some of the best world building on PC. The setting is stunning, the story is gripping, and the attention to detail is obscene. Sure, it has a few problems. There's a little too much combat, the car handling is twitchy, some of the checkpointing is rage inducing, but it's still great despite its shortcomings. And here's why. Mafia 2 is the story of Vito Scaletta, whose family emigrates from Sicily to the city of Empire Bay in 1932. After being arrested for robbery in 1943, he's given a choice, go to jail or join the army. Deciding a stint in the army is better than rotting in a prison cell, he finds himself back in Sicily, fighting Mussolini's black shirts. In 1945, Vito returns to Empire Bay on leave. He's due back in a month, but his old pal Joe Barbaro, who has connections with organized crime, pulls some strings, and suddenly he's freed from service. He tries to live a straight life, humping crates down at the docks for 10 bucks a day, but this doesn't last long. The lure of the underworld and the riches it promises is just too powerful for a guy like Vito. Reviews at the time were mixed. Its toughest critics complained that its open world was sterile and empty, that there was nothing to do in it, but they were missing the point. If you play Mafia 2 expecting Grand Theft Auto, you're going to be disappointed. It's really, at its heart, a linear, completely story-led shooter. The city is there, but it's really just a backdrop, a lovingly crafted film set designed to give the story a rich sense of place. Empire Bay is not as dense or intricate as the likes of Grand Theft Auto V's Los Santos, but it's still one of the finest virtual cities on PC. It's fictional, based loosely on New York City and Chicago, but the artists at 2K Check did a stellar job of making it feel like a real place. The level of detail is remarkable. Workers mill around the docks, unloading cargo from ships. Cherry blossom trees sway in the wind in Chinatown. Birds perch on street signs. There are newspaper boys, smoking chimneys, buzzing neon signs, and a thousand other tiny incidental details which combine into a wonderful whole. Empire Bay is not littered with side missions, arbitrary collectibles, or crazy vehicles to steal. You never get to drive a tank or use a jetpack. But it's still a joy to wander and explore its streets, for what it is and how it feels, not what it has to offer you between missions. It didn't take me long to fall in love with Mafia 2. The second mission, in fact. Our anti-hero returns from World War II on a cold winter's evening in 1945, and finds himself back in the Italian neighborhood where he grew up. Dean Martin's Christmas classic Let It Snow plays as he walks the streets, still in his uniform, suitcase in hand. B-17 bombers fly overhead, reminding us that the war is far from over. We see couples arguing, kids throwing snowballs, and a guy getting a haircut in a barber shop. It's a wonderful piece of scene setting, something this game is very good at. Mafia 2 is also a rare example of an open world game where we see two versions of the same city. The first chunk of the game takes place in the 1940s. The mood is dark and gloomy, with snow piling up on cars and sidewalks, people slipping on icy pavements and a palpable chill in the air. Mafia 2 is a superb period piece, second only to Rockstar's painstakingly researched L.A. Noir and its authentic portrayal of America in the 1940s. It's here that Vito begins climbing the criminal ladder. Like GTA, you start off at the lowest level, pulling off small-time heists, selling stolen goods, and other odd jobs. But then something goes wrong, and Vito ends up in jail. This serves as an interlude of sorts. You're confined to a prison, the Hartman Federal Penitentiary, which is another example of 2K Check's absurdly detailed world building. 
The first person walk into the prison past rows of jeering inmates is particularly well done. In the slammer, you get to know a few of your fellow inmates, including a respected mafia consigliere named Leo Galante, who's there doing his own time. You also make a powerful enemy in the form of hulking Irish brute Brian O'Neill. Vito sharpens his boxing skills, cleans a few toilets, makes some new friends in the shower room, and impresses Galante, who proves to be a valuable ally later in the game. The whole prison sequence is like the Shawshank Redemption meets the prison scenes from Goodfellas, and it's a perfect palate cleanser for what's to come. Six years later, Vito emerges from prison to find a very different Empire Bay waiting for him. The year is 1951 and the city is no longer bleak and snowy, it's bright, colourful, green and vibrant. The war is over, the economy is recovering, and the teenagers have taken over, screeching around in sports cars, listening to rock and roll, and, later in the game, butting heads with the stubbornly old-school Joe and Vito. The music and commercials on the radio even change to reflect each time period, from the Andrews sisters and Bing Crosby in the 1940s, to Little Richard and Bill Haley in the 50s, the game boasts a superb selection of period music. Mafia 2 may be set in a fictional city, but it's a convincing portrait of the United States in the 1940s and 50s, and not just the good bits either. It's surprisingly bold when it comes to dealing with racism, poverty, and other issues that plague the period, something Mafia 3 would tackle even more directly. Mafia 2 is also a gangster power fantasy. As his bank balance increases, you can dress Vito up in fashionable, period-accurate suits, scream around in shiny sports cars and fire Tommy guns. As he rises in the ranks, his safe houses get more lavish, from scummy apartments to an idyllic, modernist 1950s house in the leafy suburbs. Mafia 2 may be rooted in real history, but it's an exaggerated, pulpy tale of warring gangs and criminal conspiracy. It's a good one, though, with a twisty, dramatic plot that will keep you interested all the way through its twelve or so hours. Vito is not a sympathetic character. He is, after all, a ruthless criminal, but you warm to him just the same. And his buddy Joe is a memorable sidekick. It's a solidly written and well-acted game filled with memorable set pieces. Looking back, it's the smaller, quieter moments in Mafia 2 that have really stuck with me over the years. In one mission, Vito drives Joe and another character to bury a body in the countryside. They're both drunk, and as you drive, they start singing along to Dean Martin's sentimental ballad, Return to Me. When it gets to the Italian verse, they clearly don't know the words, but they give it a shot anyway. It's a funny game when it wants to be, and these moments of comedy are a nice break from the action. The game regularly takes the time to slow down and let you enjoy the world and atmosphere. Honestly, when you get down to it, Mafia 2 is a pretty generic cover shooter. But it makes up for this with its mission variety, personality, sense of humour, and, of course, Empire Bay, which remains one of the most magnificent settings on PC. And thanks to the release of Mafia 2 Definitive Edition, it will run on a modern PC without any hassle. <laughs> 